another episode of Walking Step by Step in Christ. I'm your host, Coach Stacy, and I would like to discuss a topic that I talk about a lot. I really do. I talk about this subject of healing a lot because there's a lot of emotions, you know, that go around sicknesses and diseases and I was recently uh, going through a little town and uh, stopped in to see uh, I Nina stopped in to see uh, stopped to a grocery store little little, little market and uh, a woman came up to me uh, who works there and she's pretty emotional and uh, you know she went on to tell me that she had to go through a series of tests, uh, you know, possible cancer. And uh, she was completely beside herself. And at that moment, I just thought, wow, you know, first of all, you know, do you know the Lord, first of all? You know, and a lot of my messages are geared toward really knowing Christ. I mean, really knowing Christ. And then when you know Christ, you trust in Him. You don't only believe in Him, you trust in Him. Uh, you die to Him, you surrender to Him. But the biggest thing is that you trust Him. And I, I, I don't know if she trusts in Him. So that's my, that is my first responsibility uh, with this woman. But it always gets me to thinking, you know, it's like you get sick, right? And it could be, it could even be terminal. And you think that you'll, you, you, you're not going to get out of this. You know, you're never going to heal. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to die and all this stuff. And uh, scripture scripture's clear on some of these things. And, and I talk about it a lot. Kate, thanks for stopping in. But I want to start off by saying a couple things. Just setting, uh, setting a foundation. Especially for me, because I want you to know where my heart is, first and foremost. And the first thing is, is that I want you to know that I believe 100% in healing. I've seen it. Literally, I've seen it. So, I believe in it. I know it's real. And I'm talking about what one would call, you know, um, a miracle. So, let me just say it in a different way. I believe in miracles, regardless of the miracle, whether it's a a health miracle or, you know, a, a prodigal miracle or a marriage miracle. I, I, I just believe in miracles. I believe that God is in complete control. I'm, I'm setting my foundation right now because what I'm going to go over with you is not about me. It's about him. Okay. I believe in prayer, like seriously believe in prayer. And those of you who know me know I pray a lot. I pray for a lot of people. I'm on the prayer team. I look for people to pray for. I don't care if I'm in a restaurant like a couple days ago. If I find somebody who needs prayer, I'm right there with you. So I believe in prayer. But I also believe in times that there are times of grieving. Uh, kind of like the woman, you know, in the market. She was... She was given something that was overwhelming to her emotions, and there are times of grieving. So I want you to not completely understand that. But the most important thing I want you to understand is this, is that I trust the plan of God. I trust His plan. And I don't know what it is. I have an idea what it is, but I, I, I don't know. So. I'm going to trust him. I have to walk by faith, not by sight or not by ear or what I hear. I've got to walk by faith. So I've got to trust in God's plan. So with that said, I just want to go over a few scriptures right now, talk about those scriptures, and then I just want to close this, wrap it up, because I think the word will tell everything. And first and foremost... Uh, in the beginning of this series, I talk a lot about, you know, who you are in Christ and if you're in Christ, really. 
some of you that aren't really in Christ or not really following Christ, some of the stuff that I go over that God is saying could be offensive because you're not there yet. Maybe your faith's not there yet. Maybe, um, maybe I don't know, just your faith's not there yet. So some of the stuff is hard to, to, to accept because we all have fleshly desires, especially when we come to Christ, we're still in the flesh, although we have the spirit that we're working with. So um, when we come to Christ, okay, we are reborn, so to speak, and we're reborn into eternal life in Christ. So if I understand that I am reborn, I'm not that same person, okay? It says in John that uh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. And the reason why I want to start off with that yet is to know who I am and where I'm going eventually. What's going to happen at the end, where I am at the end. So whatever happens in an illness or where, where I'm trying to get healed about, gout or cancer or lupus or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, I know where I am and where I'm going. Okay, because we have, we have two deaths. Okay. There's a death of our flesh, and there's a death. That, and when we, when we, there's a death that when we get reborn, we die to ourselves and we're reborn. And then there's really no other death. There's one death that somebody's going to have that you won't be able to recover to. You'll die to your flesh, and you'll die in the spirit because you haven't accepted Christ. That doesn't apply to you here, okay? So he also said that he died for our wounds. You know, our wounds and our transgressions and in first Peter, you know, first Peter talks about, you know, uh, uh, he himself bore our sins in his body on the cross and by his wounds or we were healed. I tell the story sometimes uh, when we talk about um, taking uh, com uh, communion. I talk about that walk to the cross and how God was just beat and spat on and cursed at and whipped and, and all these things. And every time that happened, I'm sure he was just looking over in the crowd and just looking at them saying, yeah, that lash, that was, that was for that thing that you did, you know, and, and this lash he hit me on this rock that hit me in the head. Yeah, I took that. I took that for you and, and, and the cancer that you have. Okay, so give that to me. I'm dying for all this. The stuff that I'm going through and I'm getting hit and beaten. You saw the Lord's body all wounded and just just mangled. He's saying that I, I, every time something came over me, I did that for you. I did that for your illness. I did that for your marriage. I did that for this, for that. So I tell that story when, when I talk about uh, communion because those are the things that, that I think about. All those things that he did for me that I have no right to hang on to. And, and, and I'm, great, I'm grateful that he had grace enough to, to accept me into his kingdom and forgive me my sins, although I never deserved it. Okay, But it's through him I deserve eternal life. So our earthly bodies become heavenly bodies. In heaven, there are no illnesses, none, none. On earth, we have illness, but in heaven, there are no illnesses. We have heavenly bodies, like new bodies, like literally new bodies. So if I'm in heaven and I have a new body, those old things no longer apply to my body in every aspect. I no longer have an earthly body. I have a heavenly body. That's healing above. 
the healing that comes on this earth is a miracle healing that God decides, hey, I'm going to heal you right here on this earth. Hi, Michelle. I'm not going to wait to get. I'm not going to wait to give you a brand new heavenly body that will heal you. I want to heal you here on this earth. Those are the healings that I 100% believe in. Those are the situations and miracles that I've actually seen happen, that God healed somebody on this earth in their earthly bodies. I believe that. But I also know that outside of that, there is a healing guarantee also, which is our heavenly bodies will be 100% healed, period. With that said, if I go into Corinthians, especially chapter 15, I recommend you just read all of chapter 15, 1 Corinthians. It talks about the, uh, the resurrection, the resurrected body. There is uh, no resurrection of the dead. If there's no resurrection of the dead, then there's not, then, then not even Christ has been raised from the dead. It also talks about the body that has been sown and uh, that is sown is perishable. It is raised imperishable. So in our earthly bodies, it's perishable. But when we're raised and when, when we go to heaven, we are imperishable. It also talks about uh, if there is a natural body, there's also a spiritual body. So there's distinctions. I got this natural body here on earth, and then I got this, 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 this spiritual body when I get to heaven. And with that said, if I focus on this natural body that's on the earth and say, at the end of my life, I wasn't healed, I'm in Christ. Therefore, I go into a spiritual body that I'm completely healed. You know, I've had people that passed away in my life that were really suffering. Now, I'm sure you guys have too. You know, maybe whatever disease it was, and they were really suffering. And when they passed away, the first thing I thought is they're no longer in pain. They're no longer in suffering. They're, they're way better than they were here on this earth. Which tells me that they're in a completely new body. They're healed. How you doing, Gregory? They're healed. They're hundred percent healed. You can't get any more healed than being in heaven with a with a with a heavenly body. You can't get more healed than that. So although the Lord uh, decided that He'd rather just give them a whole new healed body, it was His decision. I then have to look at that and say, "Thank you, Lord. Thank you for healing my." whatever. Thank you for the ultimate healing that you've given them. I would have probably preferred that you did it here on this earth, selfishly. But I trust in your plan and what you've done in this moment and you've, you've given them a brand new body in Christ Jesus. And there's, there's, no, there's no better healing that you can give them than what you've given them. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that there's no more suffering in this earthly body. Did you heal them beyond any measure? You can't get any more healed than what you've done for them, Lord. And I thank you for that. With that, I know as a person still left on the earth, that my person that the Lord made that decision for, I'll see them instantaneously. They're in heaven. And they're way better off. And I'm sure, I'm sure they're going, this is where I'd rather be. And I want you here. This is so much better, Stacy. And I wish that, I can't wait for you to come. You'll be here. Listen, life is like this much compared, not even that. It's like, not, it's like that much compared to eternity. So I know I'll see my brothers and sisters soon. They're going to see me in the blink of an eye. It's just me. I have to be here on this earth. I've got to wait to see them. But they're seeing me. It's like that. 
and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to join them in that healing, in that spiritual body, being completely healed of everything. I'm talking mentally and physically, not just physically. Our bodies will be transformed, you know, as it says in Philippians. If you go to Philippians uh, 3, 20 and 21, you know, but our citizenship is not here, you know, it's, it's in heaven, you know. Um, will transform our lowly bodies <laughs> so that we will make, be made like his glorious body. So it's not going to be the same. So there's a transformation from whatever we're going through, whether it's a physical thing or whether it's a mental thing. Uh, we're talking about, well, actually, we're talking about mental or physical because there are a lot of mental things that people are going through that's an illness that they will be healed from, whether God decides to do it here or whether he decides to do it on this earth, which takes me to my last point. The decision, guys, is not ours. The decision, what happens to us, the decisions that happens with our family members, the decisions that happens with our friends and our loved ones are not ours. And we have got to submit ourselves to God's will because he says in Isaiah, he says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, okay? My plans are not your plans. My will is not your will. So we have to submit to God's will what he has planned, not only for the person's life, but for our lives. So a lot of times when people pass away in my life, there is a grieving process. That's why I started off in the beginning to say, I believe in a time to grieve, but also believe in a time that I've got to say, okay, Lord, first of all, thank you for this life. That's number one. Thank you for everything that was given me through that life. But Lord, now, what do you want me to glean out of this situation? Is there something that you have for me? Is there something in my life that I'm not doing that you want me to do? Is there something that you want me to see that I'm through, through this, Lord? Tell me what it is. Show me what it is. Mold my life. Make my, make my plan more like the plan that you have. Because a lot of times the Lord allows things to happen in our lives um, to move us in the direction that he wants to move us in. And Fortunately or unfortunately, sometimes that comes in sickness. Sometimes that comes in death. And I truly believe we need to take the time to go, hey, Lord, okay, so in this situation, as drastic as it, as drastic as it looks, as much hurt as I'm going through right now, what, what is it that you're trying to, to show me through this? Okay? Help me seek my heart through this. Because it's way bigger. It's way bigger than the loss, the fleshly loss and the emotions that I'm going through. And I, I'll, I'll go through the emotions. I get it. I'll grieve. I get it. But at the end of the day, Lord, show me, teach me, lead me in that way that you want me to go. And if you have to use this season or the situation in my life, Lord, please do that. So, I just want to say a prayer real fast. Um, I pray that, that this resonates with some of you. and You look at illnesses a different way. You actually look at death in a different way, especially in Christ, a different way. And you're able to move past some of the sorrow and the hurts and the grieving process to know at the end of the day that it's a Romans 8, 28 and God works all things out for good. So Father, I just thank you right now. I thank you for, uh, I thank you for having an opportunity to share every time I share, Lord. Now I just pray, Lord, if there's anything I said that's out of your will, that you move it away, you pass it, cast it as far as the east is to the west, Lord. I pray that it falls on deaf ears, Lord. Anything that I said that is of your word, Lord, I pray that it resonates in the hearts and minds and spirits of those that are listening here and that will come on, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity that you've given us to have eternal life. And not only have eternal life, 
but to have life here on this earth and have the the opportunity to be healed here on this earth by you and we also thank you for the opportunity that we know that at the end of the day that we will have a brand new healed body through you lord that you will supply to us and in at that point we will be in the heavens with you so we thank you for that opportunity now lord just seek our hearts right now if there's anything that that we're holding on to whether it be a thought of despair of fear of anxiety in our illness or in our losses lord we ask that you give us comfort right now to help us through that grieving process and then lord we ask that you that you open up portals to help us seek your will in our lives and what you have for us through these struggles so lord we thank you for this message that we've heard right now we ask that that you use it for your glory in jesus name amen okay guys next week i'm going to go a little bit deeper there's some things you know i, I talk a lot about relationships uh, but i have a message next week that's going to talk about marital strife and I titled this Marital Strife. Why my marriage, Lord? It could be relationship strife. But why my relationship, Lord? What, what, why am I going through this? Why, 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 why? I think there's a lot of answers in scriptures. But the biggest answer... It's going to be in ourselves. So I look forward to sharing that message with you next week. And uh, I will be going live on my, um, my main Facebook page, Stacy A. Scott. I'm going to be going live on uh, Saturday night. I'm going to be going live about 9 o'clock Central Standard Time just to talk. Last time I did that, it was just so fun. I uh, learned a lot from a lot of people. Uh, I was able to reach out to people on Facebook uh, that I've never reached out to. Hi, Teresa. I hope you join me on Saturday. And um, just a fun time. You know, I just want to get together, talk things out. You know, uh, there's some things that I have on my heart and I'm going to share with you. And I'm sure you're going to share back. And if there's something that uh, you share with me the Lord talks to me I just I want to hear it all and then on the other side there are the people that will be there and they'll be sharing maybe they can share something that you'll get something out of and Lord willing maybe I'll share something that you'll get something out of but I just want to take like a good 45 minutes and just sit on my chair over there and just relax and share so get a cup of coffee get a cup of tea hot tea Find a place to snuggle up someplace, like really. I'm not going to be in this chair. I'm going to tell you that right now. I'm going to be on a sofa or my little leather chair over there. And I'm just going to be chill, just talking. So I hope to see you Saturday night. Uh, those of you who are here that aren't on my Facebook page, go to Stacy A. Scott. Come on in and join. Friend me. I'll bring you on. I look forward to talking to you guys then. I love you guys. Take care.